In the last few decades, astronomers realized that stars seem to vanish for one reason or another. We actually discussed this concept in some of the previous videos, and in many cases it's actually unknown why some stars basically disappear. Although in most cases, it's actually believed to be a result of some kind of a collapse, or potentially maybe the stars were much brighter than they should have been for a very long time, then suddenly dimming to the original brightness and just remaining there ever since. But obviously, more exotic explanations involve the idea of extraterrestrial intelligence and maybe even Dyson spheres. The point is that disappearing or vanishing stars is a pretty well-known phenomenon. One of the previous videos from, I guess, a few years ago goes through the study that essentially discovered over a hundred such stars in just the last few years. And so what happens to those stars is of course unknown, but the most likely explanation is that there's just no one explanation. They probably decrease their brightness or possibly even change into something entirely different for completely different reasons. There is, however, one star that is very exciting and that we need to talk about again. The star that you kind of see right here. N6946-BH1. A star discovered back in 2007 because it seemed to be going supernova. Except that it didn't, it just disappeared into nothingness without completely exploding. Back then, because of this, the disappearing star here was assumed to have turned into a black hole, which is why it has BH1 in its name. And this was a very exciting discovery for reasons I'll explain to you in a few seconds. But these older observations were made by the Hubble telescope. It wasn't able to see things very well. James Webb, though, can, and it actually discovered something entirely different. Something that we're actually going to be discussing in this video, in the process finally explaining what happened here and why the star vanished approximately 11 years ago. To some extent solving the mystery of at least one vanishing star. Hello, wonderful person. This is Anton, with a slightly cranky voice, mostly because of flu and stuff. But I couldn't wait for my voice to get better and really wanted to discuss the star. And well, first of all, where exactly is it? It's not actually in the Milky Way. It's approximately 20 million light years away from us in a galaxy known as NGC 6946. Another typical spiral galaxy located in a nearby group of galaxies. And being a galaxy with a lot of activity, specifically a lot of starbursts, visible in a lot of different nebula located inside the galaxy, it's actually been a source of at least 10 separate supernova, with at least 4 supernova happening here in just the last 20 years. And so it was not actually a big surprise when another star was discovered to brighten up here to the point where it was expected to explode very soon. In this particular case, the luminosity of the star was suddenly increased to approximately 1 million solar luminosities, indicating that something was about to happen to this star. In most cases, it usually means an explosion. But it never came. Instead, by 2015, it almost completely disappeared without ever revealing anything. And though it's not entirely invisible, there are still some infrared emissions visible even today, everything definitely is dimming, not increasing in brightness, and not suggesting an upcoming supernova. Which eventually classified the star as a failed supernova, but also provided an exciting explanation and evidence for what probably happens to more massive stars. Or at least that was the initial explanation. Anyway, so here's how it kind of went. When it comes to very famous type 2 supernova, normally they're mostly expected from stars between 8 to maybe 18 solar masses. And this is exactly what's been so far observed from all of the supernovas seen around us. They usually happen around stars that are much more massive than the Sun, so at least 8 solar masses, but are normally not more massive than approximately 18 solar masses. And so for stars between 18 to 25 solar masses, it wasn't actually clear what happens to them. Now we know that some of the more massive stars sometimes actually explode without leaving anything, and some more massive stars don't explode and actually collapse into black holes directly. But for stars between 19 to 25 solar masses, there's an unusual mass gap where so far none of the supernova have ever been discovered coming from these types of stars. In astronomy, this is known as the red supergiant problem. Essentially being another mystery when it comes to not understanding what happens to certain stars. So it's possible that they actually exploded in some other way, potentially producing different types of supernova, but one of the explanations once again suggested maybe black holes. Maybe they actually collapsed directly into black holes with no visible explosion after experiencing some kind of instability. 
And this explanation was important for another reason. It would actually explain why so many gravitational studies so far discovered more massive black holes than anyone expected, suggesting that they came from much larger stars, so possibly direct collapse of a star that's at least 25 solar masses. And because the rate of formation of these types of black holes would be very rare, maybe about one per year within about 100 million light years away from us, trying to confirm this would be very difficult. But that's exactly what the scientists believe they discovered here. In 2015, it was almost certainly confirmed that this is maybe one such object, possibly a confirmation that stars directly collapse into black holes if they're approximately 25 solar masses down to maybe about 19 solar masses. No supernova required, no supernova remnant left. So by then, it was a pretty great discovery. However, maybe not everyone agreed with this, and scientists wanted confirmation using better telescopes, such as James Webb. And so they pointed it here, decided to study the region, and discovered that, yeah, looks like maybe this is not exactly what happened. James Webb was able to see with much higher resolution and reveal details that were previously completely invisible. So first of all, the actual remnant is still visible in the infrared. Obviously not as bright, but still there even after all these years. But second of all, once they actually zoomed in to the highest possible extent, they started to discover that this was possibly not a single object. According to the researchers behind this study, instead of one remnant, they seem to have discovered three, implying that the supernova explanation, or even the collapse explanation, would not really make sense. And also because the remnant dust shell did not appear to be equally distributed, it implied some kind of a one-sided cataclysmic event. Something that would produce a lot of luminosity, potentially eject a lot of material from the star, and then suddenly make it dim without turning into a black hole and without a supernova. And then, based on the spectrum analysis and the data from other studies, they were able to match this almost directly to actual events we've seen right here in the Milky Way at least three times. So yeah, this was not a failed supernova, this was actually a star collision, almost perfectly matched with the event from the Milky Way of V1309 Scorpii. Although I think this event is a lot more well known, V838 Monocerotis. Today these are known as the Red Luminous Nova, and they essentially sort of mimic a supernova, but they're much less powerful, do not produce a supernova-like explosion, and instead release a lot of gas around the star, and all of this gas is illuminated by the central object, that create these very beautiful patterns. And most likely this is just a result of what's known as the contact binary system, basically merging into one star, throwing off huge amount of mass, turning into a very hot ultraviolet bright object, but not really leading to a supernova at all. These types of stars are surprisingly common, and so it's not unusual to see this happening in a galaxy not so far from the Milky Way. And because in this case we also observe ultraviolet emissions as well, on top of what seems to be some kind of a carbon dust, it more or less reinforces the idea that this was not a supernova, not a collapsed black hole, instead two stars becoming one, with that remnant star just being very mild now and barely visible. And so at least for now this pretty much solves the mystery of this vanishing star, or at least one of many hundreds of such stars, but unfortunately removes that very important proof of potential black hole collapse for stars of 19 to 25 solar masses, so we still don't really know what happens to those types of stars. But it does show that James Webb is able to answer a lot of the questions we could not previously answer before by seeing details of different events that no other telescope was able to see previously. Anyway, at least for now, we can lay one mystery to rest. Thank you for watching, we'll come back and talk more about this once there are more updates or more discoveries. Subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.